Hey, it's Sol with another video. Titan forging sucks, doesn't it? Hey, that's an upvote trigger. I'm kidding, I'm just kidding. Titan forging is a lot of things to a lot of people. To Blizzard, it's a rare and random item level bonus. But behind Titan forging and older systems like Legion legendaries and artifact power is a mandate set by the Ian Hezekostis regime. I'm paraphrasing, but according to them, players shouldn't feel bad about going back into that same old raid or dungeon or daily quest because they might come out with something cool. Blizzard has been applying this mandate pretty aggressively. Take Legion for example. Go into a dungeon or two. What can you expect, as rare as it might be? There's gold, an artifact power, an order resources, gear, legendaries, titan forged gear, best in slot titan forged gear, best in slot titan forged gear with a socket and a side of fries. Mmm. It sounds good, especially the fries. In practice, it is good for a lot of players. We mostly like gear. However, the question is, is this enough? Did, did we peak? Is the idea of titan forging satisfying enough for Blizzard to go no further with designing a reward system to execute on that mandate? No. I don't think it is, much like I don't think it's the best feeling to get a 960 Titanforged trinket when it could have been a 965. Ooh, those first world problems. Today's video is going to address not exactly Titanforging, but the reason behind it, that mandate to continue entertaining players with the same old content. I have an idea, or more like an example, one that is absurdly familiar, and I'm going to do a comparison. On one hand, we have Titanforging. On the other is a system that will let you build and decorate your very own home. Hey, that is not what I'm talking about. It's not important if you did enjoy the garrison or not, this is anything but that. This sounds kind of crazy at first, right? What does super best in slot gear have to do with player housing? Not everyone cares as much about playing house, just like not everyone cares about best in slots, or pets, or raiding for that matter. This very opinionated video will first brush on just a few of the systems that did work in Legion. I'll explain why Titanforging is an okay but flawed and incomplete approach to what they're trying to achieve. And then I'll talk about player housing, its challenges, and how this can also maybe better execute on Blizzard's values. This video was partially inspired by Theet Gaming, thanks to a fun conversation we had the other week comparing Transmog to Titanforging. And it was fun, maybe you should listen to it. Okay, so what did work in Legion? Like I said, these are all my opinions based on observation and experience, so you'll agree or disagree with me at different levels. That's totally fine. The wardrobe system worked. Along with Transmog, it expanded collections well beyond our maxed out bank slots and void storage for the purpose of fashion. This not only fueled a desire to tackle older dungeons and raids, but quests, as well as any vendor that ever sold anything that could be saved at the wardrobe. And this is more like an older system, but other account-wide cosmetics like toys and pets and mounts, those worked to a limited degree. Adding these to raids, and just as importantly, putting them on a personal loot table gets players wanting to go back. What these systems share is that they don't expire. The list of mounts ever expands. Pets, at least cosmetically, don't go away. Neither does Transmog. And these always stay relevant, so long as you like them before the next shiny thing appears. And you can always go back too. This gets me to Titan Forging, which does not share this quality because it's gear, player, power. And that power is relative. It's impossible for a single player to obtain every best in slot gear thing on day one of a given patch. And even if they did, that satisfaction is temporary. Because the next patch, the next expansion will come, and all that effort doesn't quite go away, but it becomes less relevant because the gear grind begins anew. Of course, getting everything in one day is a timeless story. God, imagine the bragging rights. Anyway, that's a really cynical way that I see it, I have to admit. Some of us see gear and Titanforging as just a means to an end, tools to complete the challenges laid before us and get the achievements that do in fact last. What we're comparing is one system of rewards that is considered forever, while one is considered fleeting. But one isn't better than the other because we're all different players with different priorities. Ideally though, since these two systems don't contradict with one another, the best solution is to have both. And we do. So let's get back on topic. I want to design a system that fulfills this mandate and is fun for players. But why am I using player housing as an example? Here's why. One is that it's a response to the continued desire for player housing by those who've been asking for it particularly those who might have been disenfranchised by garrisons. Two is that I'm doing this while not pretending that player housing is for everyone. And that's key. 
just like pet battles, raiding, PvP, or any of the other activities in WoW, some will care and some will not. I think the best approach is to build this kind of system with that particular core audience in mind as opposed to trying or forcing everyone to participate. And third is because this fits the model. I chose it because just like Transmog and Titanforging, Timewalking and Mounts, this system can grow forever as new art and new assets are introduced. So here's the high level overview, and I'll get into details, but remember, this is all just an example to sell the idea that this will get people to keep farming content. I'm going to leave out major hurdles, like if uh, housing will be instant, then where it's going to be and all that. That kind of stuff can be built on later. Player housing will be 95% cosmetic. The only functional things in player housing will be items that support professions, you know, like an anvil, building rest experience because, well, obviously it's your freaking house and a mailbox, because same difference. There's going to be a storage box too, but that's not necessarily going to be a bank, and I'll touch on that a little bit later. With respect to the current WoW engine, odds are going to be that the house is going to be prefabricated. That is, the base design of the house itself is going to be fixed. Blizzard artists will design the very basic structure of said home for each race, with different sizes maybe. One possibility would be to have kind of like modules to add different sized rooms or rooms that have a specific purpose. Most everything else as to like what's on the walls, the floors, the ceiling and so on is entirely up to the player. From colors to floor types and materials, furniture, pictures, statues, floating little wisp things, a fireplace, beds and more. Trophies can hang on walls with the severed heads of your enemies. Mannequins with their own paper dolls to show off your completed sets or your favorite transmog weapons over the hearth, you name it. All of these things will need considerable amounts of in-game resources in order to build, and blueprints or recipes. And it's these things that are absolute key to this Blizzard mandate. Making a house full of empty rooms will probably start out simply with something like gold, or I don't know, a secondary profession like chopping wood, I don't know. Home building though will be a new secondary profession to house all of these recipes that you've learned, and these recipes drop from rare mobs and bosses. Everything you build will require these generic building materials, a separate resource that builds up over time because uh, a peon is probably farming it for you, you know, if you want to roleplay this, and there will be a maximum cap. This is mostly here as a form to help with self-control and to stop you from being over-obsessed with non-stop building and the gathering of special items to craft stuff. The system is meant to last, so there's no need to rush. Alright, so let's pretend. Let's say one day, you kill Argus the Unmaker. He drops a certain material called Argus's Boxers or something, along with a recipe to have a variant of his helmet as an overhead light fixture. I don't know what Argus's Boxers have anything to do with light fixtures, but whatever. Fun. So to craft that, you need a number of Argus Boxers, some profession materials from the Legion expansion specifically, probably some other exotic items and the basic building materials that you get from that peon. The recipe and the rare drop are designed to be a thing that's uh, easy to farm when the content is relevant, but maybe a bit harder once you've moved on to the next expansion. But now you have all the stuff you need and you make it. It's now saved and bound to your account, and you can now place it in your home. So think of the process as a combination of collecting, crafting, and like transmog. Let's pretend some more. We want a bear skinned rug. Cool. All bears in WoW across all expansions will have a chance to drop some bear skin as a common material. Bears come in different colors and configurations, so bear skins should have separate recipes for each unlockable. Some skins might need more rare materials, so it would make sense that rare quality bears have a higher likelihood of dropping said materials. Ursok, the raid boss, is also technically a bear. Maybe he'll drop epic material that's normally super rare and a unique recipe skin of his own. It might be extremely rare in a post-Legion world, but the chance could be increased if, you know, let's say Emerald Nightmare Time Walking was a thing, and you down that boss during the weekly event. This makes for a lot of potential items with a lot of potential inventory to take up. So while not very immersive, I think it'd be a good idea for these materials to go on personal loot and automatically go into a separate bank all the way at your home. So you can trade or sell that stuff later. Other materials can be covered by your local crafters, with some being more rare than others. Imagine needing a thunderforged steel rod thing so you can impale Lanixia's head on a spike that conducts lightning. That can make for quite the cost, or a tidy profit. What about guild housing though? That's been kind of a thing too. 
Imagine pooling your resources to proudly display the corpses of your enemies that you and your team killed together, or put up a temporary statue of the Guildmate of the Week or something. There's been a lot of demand for that too, and one of the big arguments from Blizzard is that, well, if guild housing were a thing, the person who'd have the most fun with it would be the guild leader, which is true. However, what if there were separate modules within this guild hall that you could assign separate permissions to, like, your officers? Or what if there were special designations that anyone can customize however they like, but with, you know, fancy technology, it was phased only for those particular players? I should cite a few other doubts about player and guild housing, according to Wowpedia. If housing was a thing, then there's the possibility of cities and towns feeling empty, because players will be engaged with their guild hall or their home. But regarding the look and feel of the world, well, that's what phasing and sharding is for, right? And it's clear that with Warlords of Draenor, they were willing to put up with players feeling isolated before sharding was even introduced. That argument against guild and player housing is significantly less relevant thanks to WoW's own advances in technology. The expectation for housing is that players can walk into their instanced little world and walk out into the bustling city for their bank and their other things to do. When it comes to development time, there is no argument that the resources for this would be considerable, to say the least, between the art, engineering, and instancing, just to name off a few things. But the same thing goes for Island Expeditions and Warfront, which very few people were actively looking for, but were looking forward to them anyway. At least, most of us are. And going back to Titanforging, well, Titanforging is just math. That's the genius of it, that it changed the way we experienced the game with just that additional calculation. But it's because Titanforging was such a simple addition that there's also room for something more grandiose. Fully supported player housing can be sold as a content platform not unlike transmogrification. Players will be sitting in their homes to enjoy the fruits of their labor, sharing what they have on social media and doing a live tour of their home like it's frickin' WoW Cribs or whatever they're gonna call it. But it also means they're logged into the game. And when they're not sitting in their home or guild hall, well, they might be farming for materials or recipes or selling those on the auction house or otherwise doing some of their normal activities. If Blizzard applies their current thinking to player housing, then they can deliver on one of the more requested features for WoW while further addressing their mandate. Player housing isn't the solution, it's one more solution. One more thing to add to that list of possible fulfillment in part of the player jumping into week 20 of Antorus. Will they finally get that legendary trinket, that scythe, or maybe a pair of Argus boxers? Maybe dungeons and raids should drop more than just gear to keep players interested. A little something that they can do something with. Thanks for watching, and I would love to hear your thoughts on what specifically you'd like to see that you wouldn't mind grinding for, or if you feel that everything is fine. Or to talk about player housing, I think it's probably going to be the dominating conversation even though I don't want it to be, but well, it sounds like fun anyway. So please, share your thoughts in a comment below. Like this video if you enjoyed yourself, and subscribe for more of my crazy ideas and all things Warcraft. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy.